Welcome to Family Values TV. Um, I have my guest today, a man of God, that you would love to hear his testimony and what God has been doing in this man of God life. I tell you, it is good to see people God has actually used and who has gone ahead of us and they are doing great things for God. So my guest today is Pastor Brian Madden. He is a senior pastor of Magabri Elam Church. So please welcome him on the program. God bless you, Pastor. God bless you, Annie, and thanks for having me on your program. It's an honor to have you today. It's an honor to be here. Amen, amen. How is the family? How is everybody doing? Family are all, all doing well. My, my wife, Martine, uh, is doing fine after an operation. Uh, my eldest daughter, Michelle, is 21 now. My next daughter, Jessica, is 18. She wow. is severe brain damage, just had an operation as well, but she's doing wow. pretty well. And my youngest daughter, Rebecca, who is 13. That's so, him. All wow. doing pretty so how well. Many, how many did you have? I have three girls. Wow, three girls. you are blessed. Uh, well, well, you, 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 it, it, it can... It has, it, it, people can say it's a blessing, you know, but when you have three girls and you're, well, four women in the house, Anna, you have very little money, <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that is awesome. That's awesome. Pastor, we want, we want you to tell my audience, you know, who is Pastor Brian and, you know, what God has been doing well, we're, we're, your life, yeah. your wife, we will not yeah. know, the well, first lady of the house. Well, where do you start? Well, probably at the beginning's the best place, isn't it? Uh, I'm, uh, I was uh, born and reared in a place in North Belfast, uh, a place called Tigers Bay, okay. which was uh, just a, a council estate, just like an ordinary council estate, working class people. And being brought up in that area, it was 100% uh, Protestant. Uh, they would have turned themselves loyalists, mm. loyal to the crown and the queen and stuff like that. And uh, we were brought up during the time of the Troubles. And uh, from a very early age, uh, it was instilled within me that Catholics were our enemy, the IRA was our enemy, oh, and, and we were to do anything uh, we could do to defend our community. So I was brought up within that, that type of community. Oh, my, my father was a member of the UDA, which was an illegal organization, uh, and my mother, worked as a barmaid in a public bar. Uh, subsequently, that mean, meant that I was sort of left to do my own thing because my dad became an alcoholic. Uh, you have a situation where your mum is working in a bar and your dad's always in the bar. Uh, there's no one at home to look after you. Uh, you're young, gone a little bit out of control. So uh, I basically done my own thing, thing. And from about the age of 12 or 13, I started drinking. Oh. Uh, I started taking drugs. Uh, I stopped attending school. I had no interest in school. Uh, my mother noticed it. Uh, she'd done her best. She was very concerned. Uh, sent me to psychiatrists and people like that to try and ascertain why I was going out of control. Uh, of course, no one could find a valid reason. In fact, the last time my mom took me to a psychiatrist, the psychiatrist basically told her there was nothing they could do for me and more than likely I would end up in a, in a young man's home or a prison. Oh, oh my God. Uh, so th that, that was my early life, uh, rioting. But that's what they could see at that time. Yeah, yeah. They, they yeah. didn't know that God had planned for no, you. No, that, that, and that's it. You know, that's why God, my, my, my journey with God is a journey. It's an amazing mm -hmm. journey. Uh, I would never, even, even being here today, to me, is an absolute miracle. I, I would never have dreamt. I would be here today even talking to you, Annie. If you'd have told me that when I was 16, I would have been 100% sure you were on drugs. <laughs> uh, I, I just would not have believed it. Uh, and, you know, growing up in that area, in that, in that community, uh, what happened in, in, in the 80s and the 1980s, uh, I'm sure those who are around the same age as me, I'm 45 now, uh, can remember the 80s. There was the, the mods and the skinheads and the rockers and, and, and that type of our... And uh, I became a skinhead, so a lot of us became skinheads. And with that came the Nazi party. Uh, so again, this was, a, this was another area that I channeled all my energy into. And there would have been a group of about 50 or 60 of us with DM boots, bleached jeans, braces, skinheads, uh, members of the National Front and the Nazi party, which went sort of hand in hand. 
and we were being thumped with this ideology. You are the, the, the supreme race. You are the people. You overtake the world. And at a young age, you, you're, you're so gullible. You, you believe, do, you believe absolutely everything. anything, anything. <laughs> So uh, by, by, the age of, uh, by the age of 18, uh, I'd been arrested uh, more times than what I can remember by the police at that time, who were the IUC. Uh, I used to wake up uh, at the weekend in prison cells, and I couldn't remember how I got there. My mind the night before was a blank, because we were taking a cocktail of alcohol, glue, petrol, drugs, anything at all to get high. Wow. Uh, and that's the life that we lived. Uh, I had absolutely no, no time for God. God, to me, uh, didn't exist. Mm. I would have deemed myself as a very staunch atheist. And, and as a matter of fact, if, if, if anyone had came to me with gospel literature or gospel track, and I did do this on more than one occasion, I would have ripped it up in front of them <laughs> and just threw it on the ground and told them they were wasting their time <laughs> with me. God, of course, had other plans, which I wasn't, I wasn't aware of. Uh, I, I, I guess... At, Run about the age of 13, I met my, who is my wife now, Martine. And, and just to tell you that little bit of the story, because it ties Indeed, in obviously with me. Yes. Uh, Martine was involved in, in an accident during the Troubles. The, the, the British Army, uh, who were in Northern Ireland, uh, run, run over her on the road going to a, a terrorist bomb. And subsequently, at an early age, she, she lost her leg from b below the knee mm -hmm. uh, and was in hospital for, for quite a, a considerable amount of time. Oh, I met her in secondary school, and uh, we, we were so opposite because M Martine was a churchgoer, not a Christian, but a churchgoer. And I was this rebel without a cause, uh, even though I thought I had a cause. So when Martine and me sort of met and started to go out, you can imagine Martine's mum and dad were not too keen on the idea exactly. of her daughter going with this skinhead with DM Boots who was always getting into trouble. Uh, but we, we did stay together. And Martine's mum was a Christian, and a lovely Christian woman. And she used to pray a prayer like this, Dear Lord Jesus, will you please take Bran Madden out of my daughter's life? Just, just get rid of him. Yeah, that was her prayer. She didn't know that God brought the walk in her Yeah, yeah well, th this, is, this is it. And, and the strangest, you know, and the strangest, strangest thing, hi, God, because, you know, uh, our ways are not God's ways, isn't that right? You know, we, we like to try and circumvent things and mm. put things in a nice, neat place to suit, our, to suit our own agenda. And Martine went to church every Sunday, but as I say, she was never a Christian, but yet God used me the, to see Martine saved, which is oh, a remarkable thing. God. Because it, my mum would get saved. My mum, uh, who was the barmaid, got saved at a Sammy Workman crusade, who was a great evangelist here. He's just went into the presence of the Lord a few months back. He was a great evangelist in Northern Ireland, and uh, he used to have tent crusades in the big tent, you know, like the old gospel tent style uh, crusades. And my mum went there one night, and I can remember her coming home, and, and her countenance had changed. Her whole face had changed. And uh, I knew something had happened, and she told me that she would become a Christian. Mm. Well, I was extremely annoyed, you know, extremely annoyed. Because you've got to remember, I was anti-God. That's right. I was on the other side of the sphere. Uh, no interest in God, and I didn't want anyone bringing Christianity into the home. My, my, my bedroom was full of swastikas, and uh, it wasn't until I got saved that I realized that that was satanic. So really what I was doing was opening up. Uh, to the devil coming in and controlling mm. me, controlling my thoughts, my pattern, how I behaved, etc., mm. etc. And when my mum told me she was a Christian, I just told her, well, that's fair enough, but don't preach to me <laughs> and don't ask me to go to church. You so can keep it to yourself. Keep it yourself. <laughs> and that, 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 that were my ground rules. And, of course, my mum prayed for me. And my mum was a type of lady. When she was praying for you, she let you know because she prayed loud <laughs> and, and mentioned my name on a few occasions. And <laughs> I could hear it. Thank uh, God for praying more. Amen, days. amen. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I remember shortly after that, then my, my eldest sister, who's the next one down from me, she got saved. She became a Christian. Amen. So something was happening mm. in our home. Revival. Yeah, there was a wee mini revival taking place. <laughs> and I'm getting really freaked out at this. You know, I'm wondering, <laughs> what, what's going on here? Uh, I, of course, I carried on in my own, my own wee world, you know, being arrested, trouble. Uh, I should have been dead on, on a few occasions. I, I often tell the story when I was young and got in trouble with the paramilitaries. 
I can remember at one time them, them taking me round and setting me into one of the old metal dust bin, bins, you know, they put your rubbish in, yeah. the old round metal ones, and, and they put me in the bin and put a bag over my head and put the gun to my head and pulled the trigger. I don't know to this day whether the gun jammed or whether there was no bullets in the gun. All I know is that I'm here to tell the tale. Praise God. And uh, a guy, an old man came round, he was walking his dog, and he asked me, was he okay? And I just got out and run. Uh, I didn't know what to do. So I, I had that brush with paramilitaries, and I've had umpteen other occasions when people wanted to kill me, and, and I, I should have been dead. There's no mm. question about that. But after my, my, my sister got saved, the, the most shocker of the whole lot happened in our family. My dad, who was a paramilitary and an alcoholic, uh, he got saved. And I thought, oh, no. Because to me, you know, dad was on my side. We were the drinkers. We were, the, we were out there. We were living it up. And, and he was the last chink in my armor. And, and uh, he collapsed. He, he, he was totally radically saved. And I thought... Now, there's only one other guy in the house and me, so this is three against two. Uh, this just isn't happening. Your mentor has been just... Gone, <laughs> just, just taken. And I remember the night he got saved. I, I left the house, and I didn't know what was going on in, in my own heart. I left the house, and I was really annoyed. I never come home to five o'clock in the morning. I was so annoyed that I, I felt uncomfortable in my own home. I really did. 90% uh, of the family were now Christian. Uh, every Saturday afternoon, my dad would have collected like protection money around the shops in a welfare, a little wooden box for the UDA. And this used to happen in Belfast where they went around each shop and each shop put a donation in okay. for, for prisoners, oh, uh, terrorist right. prisoners. And my dad would have collected that. Well, when he said he was a Christian, the paramilitaries didn't believe him. And they made him carry on with the collection for a few weeks. Now, I knew my dad could not possibly do that collection because he's going in and out of pubs without taking a drink. I, I never can remember seeing my father sober on a Saturday, up until that point, never. So on a Saturday, he's doing the box, and I, I'm waiting in the house, purposely waiting to rub it into m my mother because I'm 100% sure my dad's going to come walking up that street, paralytic drunk, because that's all I knew. And I waited, and I waited, and I waited, and I looked and watched my dad coming up the street, and he was sober. And it wrecked me. I, I, I just couldn't believe it. Wow. I, and I think maybe that was the first time where maybe God spoke to me, I'm real. Yes. Because no one could stop my dad drinking mm. but God. And that spooked me. It mm. really spooked me. Mm. Mm. So again, I left the house somewhat distraught. And... Uh, uh, shortly after that, Martine went in the hospital for what they call a revision of her stump. She had some abscesses and they needed to do a bit of work on it. And her pastor of the church used to visit her quite regularly. And at, on one occasion, I happened to be there and uh, he asked me, would I like a lift home? Well, there was no way I was taking a ride in a car with a pastor. No <laughs> way. It wasn't happening. So immediately I told him, no, we, we look pastor. You can see my girlfriend, but we are opposites. <laughs> we are opposites. So I turned him down. Uh, on the next occasion, he was there again, and it was a real bad winter's day. It was raining really heavy. And God was orchestrating something Well, maybe God was controlling the weather <laughs> at that time. And again, he asked me, did I want the lift? Well, I was running a bit late. I wanted to go out that night, and it was okay. raining. And I had to walk about half a mile for the bus, and I thought, well, what harm is there in taking a, a lift? So I said to him, yes, I'll, I'll take a lift. And he, he immediately responded on one condition. <laughs> I thought the guy's offering me a lift here. Now he's <laughs> wanting conditions. I says, what's the condition? That you come to church just once. Wow. And before I knew it, I'd said, okay. I didn't, it, it was just, it just came out of me, okay. And uh, he took me home. He never spoke to me, never witnessed to me. He just accepts. You know, I just said I would go to church. And uh, he dropped me off. Uh, then when Martine got to the hospital, she reminded me uh, that I told Pastor Robert Scott I would go to church. And if anything, I was a man of my word. It was big on, on if you're going to say God. something, do it. Praise God. So, men of integrity. Yeah, so I went to church. 
I, I felt like I was walking into the, uh, I don't know, it was hard to explain, it just, I was petrified. I was just petrified. <laughs> From the minute I started singing, I just felt, wow, I'm, I'm in trouble here, you know. And the pastor, the pastor preached, and I thought, this guy's reading my mail. And I'm nudging Martin, did you tell him about me? It, I didn't know this was conviction. I, I, I had no idea what conviction was. Mm -hmm. uh, the only, my, my and, and I say this as, as, as a warning to the other Christians, one of the biggest problems I had with church is that, uh, if you can picture me, I was a skinhead with DM boots, yeah. bleached jeans, braces, Nazi symbols carved into my head. And I used to walk past a church and I could sense them looking at me with yeah, contempt. Yeah, they just, yeah. And that didn't favor me towards church. So I had big issues with church. And, and I went in that night and, as I say, preached. And I was, wow, I just, please get this service over. I just <laughs> wanted to get out. <laughs> and I left, I left. But for six months, I had the worst six months of my life. Mm. It was terrible. I couldn't sleep. I was having visions of hell. I was getting a fear coming over me that I was going to go to hell. Wow. Now, you've got to remember, I never believed in yes, heaven or hell. Yes. But this just came upon me. And I, I, I was getting arrested. I was drinking more. I was taking more drugs to try and get this, what was conviction? Mm -hmm. And I didn't know, away. Away. I couldn't, it, it, I just couldn't get it to leave me. Wow. And, and, and I remember uh, on the 19th of January, 1987, I was down in Carrick Fergus at a friend's house. And uh, we had had a few, few wines. Martine was driving, so she couldn't drink. And on the way back on the main motorway coming into Belfast, the little signs were up. It was a January mod winter's evening. And the little signs were up the drive on the motorway at 40 mile an hour because there was huge cross winds. And I thought that was extraordinary because I'd never seen them as low as 40 mile an hour unless there was roadworks. But I, I looked at it quickly and I thought under my mind, that's strange. And then all of a sudden, uh, this sounds crazy, but all of a sudden I, I just heard this voice say to me, the car's gone off the motorway and you're going to hell. And I was riveted to the car seat, fear of God from the wow. top of my head to the sole of my feet. I, I believe this was happening. And, and this voice inside me rose up and I said, I'm not going to hell. There's no way I'm going to hell. And something had happened, something changed. I immediately found myself saying, Lord, if you're out there, I'm so sorry. Oh. Forgive me and save me. Wow. Now, that, that's all. I, I, see, I didn't know how to pray. I didn't know what to pray. Yes. But that's just what I felt. And the moment I'd done that, the fear went. It just... Wow. On that note, <clears throat> we're going to be on break and we'll be right back. And when we come back, we're going to find out from Pastor how immediately he said that, how God had his way in his life. Pastor, so as soon as you just said that prayer, yeah, yeah. just that yeah. simple, just then, that what simple. then what happened? Just the fear, just, it's as if it just shot out of the car and, and, and joy replaced it. This, mm. Something that, that I'd never gotten out of any drug, something that never gotten uh, through drink, it, it, just a joy. And, and I remember turning and, and, and talking to Martine and I said to Martine, because the problem with the drinks and, and drugs were after the weekend, depression always set in. Yes. It was the after effect. And I remember yes. saying something to Martine, look, see in the weekends, I'm not yeah. going to be yeah. depressed anymore. And, and Martine will tell you, if you were speaking to her, she thought, here we go, he's going to kill himself, you know. <laughs> and I turned to her and said to her, Martine, I've got saved. I, I, just, I just knew I'd get saved. And she looked at me. And, and took me home, never spoke a word to me, never spoke a word, because she was in total shock. 
Now, she wasn't as shocked as I was, but she was in shock. And, and she took me home, and, and I went into the house, and my mum was sitting on the, on the sofa. My dad was in the kitchen, and Martine, I always, I always keep her going, because each night she would have given me a good night kiss. That's the only night I didn't get one. I think she was in shock. She just left me. And, and I went into my mum, and my mum was on the, the settee, and, and I said to my mum, Mum, there's something I need to tell you. <laughs> and, and my mum just burst out crying. And I remember her looking at me and saying to me, what have you done now? Because she's thinking the worst. Yes. I, I always she's... brought trouble to the house. Always. Always. Uh, on one occasion, and uh, to let you see how crazy I was toward the gospel, on one occasion when my mum asked me to go to, to church, just asked me to go to church, I put all the furniture out through the front window of the house onto the street. Oh, my God. Every, every <laughs> piece of... My mum and dad left the house and had to go and get the place. And I barricaded my... They only asked me to go to church. I, I barricaded myself in the house and I had a dog and this dog would have bit everyone but me. Just if it... And you positioned the dog to... To bite everybody but me. <laughs> and, and you called him Prince. And I'm, I remember the police coming and, and in our front door we had... Two, two windows, one on the top, one on the bottom. The bottom one uh, was like a, a see-through glass and the top one was shaded. And the police came with their shields and, and I wouldn't let them in, so he decided that he would put his foot through the glass and as he put his foot through the glass, the dog got his foot. And, and <laughs> I immediately escaped upstairs, out onto the roof and up onto a small roof and then up onto the roof of the house. Now, you've got to remember, this is just because someone asked me to go to church. To church. And I found myself on the roof uh, with about four police Land Rovers, big military Land Rovers, and all the neighbours out. And I was throwing slates off the roof at the police. Coming from that and then telling your exactly. mum, I've got something to tell Save you. My God. She's thinking, this is the worst. Awesome. And, and what have you done, Brian? Tell me. I says, mum, I've got saved. And she, oh, oh my dad came in. <laughs> And he said, what has happened? I said, Dad, I've got saved. And he run. Amen. He run out the front door. Amen. And, and round the corner <laughs> to a friend's house to tell him that I'd got saved. And my mum hugged Praise me. God. Obviously, you know, she was, she was really excited for me. Praise and God. as a new Christian, you know, I'm, I'm excited. And I went to bed that night. It, 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 it was turning out to be the best night sleep I had until... Uh, at six o'clock in the morning, the police raided the house and arrested me. Now, you, you got to understand, I'm saved at this time about eight hours. Mm, no longer. No. Some people think when you become a Christian, your problems cease. No. I, I thought mine were only beginning. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they, they handcuffed me and they, they, uh. they, they trailed me down the stairs and I stopped and I asked them, could I get a Bible? Well, you can, now the police know me. You can imagine. You can imagine the police. Oh, oh, a what? A what? I says a Bible. <laughs> well, they were sort of stunned, but they, they let me get a Bible and they took oh, me. In, good. They put me in a, a prison cell and I had a Bible and oh, I don't know what I was reading. I was just reading stuff. And mm. They brought me out and they questioned me and about some stuff which, uh, on this occasion, I wasn't guilty of. One of one of maybe few. So I knew I had nothing to worry about. And uh, I can remember when the police were releasing me, uh, I told them I was a Christian, obviously, and they, did, they didn't believe a word of it. <laughs> but when I was leaving the police station, when you, when you go in, you've got to take your shoelaces out. I don't know why they still do this, but you had to take your shoelaces out and, and any jewellery and put it into a big padded envelope. And on your release, you signed for that and you, and, and you received it. And when I was coming back out, the police were standing at the inquiry desk and uh, I was signing for my, my possessions and the guys were saying, we hear you're, you're a Christian now, Brian, is that right? <laughs> I says, that's right, guys. And I put it in name, policemen and all started, let's all gather at the river, <laughs> the beautiful, started to sing, mocking me, you know. But uh, it didn't annoy me and I left. I went home, my mum was glad to see me. Two days later, bang, same thing happened again, police. Three days after that, Bump, same thing again, the police. It seemed to be that... Simply because you were now... A Christian. You know, yes. A Christian. And this and was the enemy. And to see you're going to turn around, you know. Yeah, yeah. And the enemy trying to pull me so, yeah. back in. Now, that changed from, you know, a remarkable change took place there from 
the police used to always arrest me if anything had happened. Uh, to six, seven months later, one time myself and Martine were out and we got a flat tire and the police pulled up beside us and got out and said, Brian, we will fix that for you. And they got out and fixed the tire for me. So that was the, the change. Such was a radical change in my life. It Man. actually astounded the police. Oh, and you know, me, me and Martine, Martine got saved one hour after I got saved and that, that's Praise how God used God. I was always her stumbling block, mm. that's what she said, and God removed the stumbling block. Mm. Of course, Martine's mum, who, who was praying for God to <laughs> remove <laughs> me, God had other plans, he saved me Amen. and then saved, saved the, the daughter. daughter. Praise Which was incredible. God. Praise God. And, and, and she's seeing you guys now, oh, you yeah. know. You know, walking for Christ and doing yeah. great things. She, Martin, Martin's mum, she went in the, the presence of the Lord a few years back, but she's seen me going up and get into the ministry and everything, children being born. Mm. And it was a real blessing for her because, you know, uh, what, what, what I'm trying to, the picture I'm trying to paint is she was, Jesse was looking at an impossible situation. And with God, all things are possible. Yes. And, and, that, and she's looking at this. If, 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 if someone like me mm. started to go out with my daughter, I would mm. be having nightmares mm. at that time. And, and you just don't know what God's going to do. He does. Look on and so it's, it's amazing, Pastor, you know, for us to have you in Family yeah. Values TV. And we hope you will, whenever we call you again, you will, you surely, know, surely. Um, oh. I'd like to, you know, to hear from you because we are encouraged that what God has really used you and how you yeah. turn around. I hope you've enjoyed that. Please, as usual, Partner with us, email us, tell us how this program has been patting you. And for the people that has been emailing for prayer, we've been praying for you. Thank you for, for writing in. Thank you for, for the testimonies you've been sharing, how Family Values TV has been impacting <coughs> in your family and lives. And, and we, our prayers and our thoughts are with you. We'll continue to be praying for you. Our partners, we are praying for you. All your emails and all your letters, we are reading it and we are praying for you. And we know that God is going to move for your favor in Jesus' name. So please do email and contact us and continue to be a partner of Family Values TV. We need your help. We need your support. God bless you. Until I see you again, my name is Pastor Anne. On which you your host on this very platform. Do remember your family do matters. God bless. Bye bye.